Hi, I'm John Twist of University Motors. Today I want to talk about the RB106 regulator. Now it's not really a regulator, it's also got a cutout in it, so it's properly called a control box. But this is the guy that determines how much your generator is going to charge in your MGA or your TF or something. Let me show you some of the pieces inside here. Now, on our cover, we have labels here for an earth connection, E, D for dynamo, F for field, A, which is your battery, and A1, which is your load. On the inside, we have two bobbins. The one on this side is normally open. It's got a set of points here. They're normally open. That's the cutout that closes and allows the charging voltage from the generator to get into the battery. This bobbin over here is normally closed and when it pulls open it uh, stops charging and controls the rate of charge. These bobbins have got very fine windings down on the inside of them. You can see the uh, the end of the wiring here. See it, the, that red wire? And on the underside you can see them both here. Uh, there's very fine windings on the inside of both of these bobbins. The coils on the outside, are those are the holding coils uh, on the voltage uh, on the cutout here and these are the current regulation coils on our voltage regulator. So let's take a look at this guy and see how he ac actually works. Let's assume that we have a we have a generator here and uh, we have a load here, lamps, uh, something, and we can spin this generator uh, at uh, a certain speed and if the load's the same and the speed's the same, that's all we have to have. We don't have to have any controlling devices at all because our load's always the same, the speed's always the same, the generators are the same manufacturer. But of course, that's not the situation with an MG. We have all kinds of stuff. The first problem that we have here is that we have to shut the generator off after it starts charging. So let's take our generator, let's put some permanent magnets on it here like we would have on a bicycle generator and we're going to bring our, our brush from this side of the commutator up to, I'm going to draw a big chassis up here, this is the chassis from our control box which is this big metal piece up here, that's the chassis of our control box and that is our D terminal, that's our dynamo terminal it comes up to here and we're going to put our load over here but you know what we have, we have a load and we have a battery both so we're just going to draw a battery here temporarily and that'll show us a that'll substitute for our load and on this side we're going to put a, a series of coils here and that then goes to ground and we have our points here which are normally open so now we can take this over here to A and A connects to our battery Let's see what happens. Our generator starts to turn, the voltage comes up, when the voltage gets to a predetermined rate, these points close and the electricity is able to come out of our generator through the points and over to our battery. Great. So that means when this guy stops charging, the points open back up again and the voltage from the battery cannot reverse and go back into the generator and burn it up. But, right around the point where we're starting to charge, around 14 volts, these points might want to chatter. We don't want these points to chatter at all because uh, chattering points and arcing points reduce the, the, uh, the life of the points. We want these to last a long time. So we're going to put here on our normally open points, we're going to put this holding coil. Right, so now, let's see what happens now. Our generator starts turning, it comes up to this predetermined point, our points close, and the current now running from the generator and into the battery has to go through this holding coil, which makes the magnetism stronger, which holds those points together real firmly. They will not shatter. In fact, they won't open until this slows down to such a point that the electricity coming from the battery reverses direction and goes back into the generator and in so doing 
overcomes the magnetism of the small coil and those points pop open. So realistically when this thing is, is working the points are either open or they're closed. Uh, not both. Well this guy works fine except that the faster we turn our generator the more voltage we get out of the system. We can't have that here. You can have that on your bicycle and the faster you're pedaling the brighter your lights get. But here instead of having permanent magnets we're going to have an electromagnet. One, one end of the field coils is connected to ground and the other side comes up here to F. And our F, this I know this is starting to get pretty, pretty complicated here. We have a set of points here which are normally closed. These, which looks like NG, those are normally open. These are normally closed. So let's, let's watch here and see what happens when we put a bobbin on the side of here. And this bobbin is just the same as the bobbin that we had over here. We start charging, the voltage comes out of here, the little little bit of residual uh, voltage comes out of here and feeds back into the field coils, increases the voltage coming out of here, feeds back into the field coils, increases the voltage coming out of here. You get this loop and instantly this thing's up to, oh my gosh, 90 volts. So we have to prevent it from getting so high, we have to stabilize it at about 14 volts and this coil and these points are so uh, constructed that they open at a predetermined point and stop the charging. So the voltage comes up to about 14 volts and quits. Falls back to zero, comes back up to 14 volts. The points open, it quits, it falls back to zero, it starts charging again, and it does this cycling about 60 times a second. Well, if these points are opening and closing 60 times a second, they're going to burn up. So we have to put a resistor across here, across the points, so that the points don't spark. Otherwise our, there's, our points won't last very long at all. Lastly, we have to do some sort of current control. So we're going to take this heavy line here that comes over to A, and we're going to bring him up here and, and, and uh, put a couple coils here and bring him over to A. We're also going to put another half coil on here. We're going to bring him over and call him A1, which is our load. And this goes off to our lights and uh, the fuel pump and the points and so forth. But that's our load. We got a lot of lot of lot of stuff going on here. But let's take one last look here and see what's happening. The system still. This is open. Um, nothing's going on. We start the car, the generator starts to turn, a little bit of residual electricity comes up through here, through here, comes across through through here, feeds back into our into our field coils, increases the amount of, of voltage coming up here round and round and round, and finally comes up and, and, and begins to stabilize up around 14 volts. At the same time, these points which are normally open close and our charging actually takes place down through here over to here um, and in, into our battery through this set of coils here and into our load over here. The whole goal is to stabilize the voltage and to keep it from overloading the generator. So let's take a look at this guy again and show you exactly what was going on. On our back side here this is our big D terminal here, and you can see he comes over and is attached to the chassis frame uh, through a screw here. And here's our F terminal here, and those two are connected through this set of points here, which are normally, normally closed. But when it starts to work, these things will pull open and start to vibrate. And what keeps it from, from eating up those points? This resistor on the back here between D and F. On this side, we have our charging and our our current is coming in to D here and coming down into our chassis frame and our chassis frame is attached to these points here and when these points close then the electricity comes through the holding coil 
comes across the bottom, comes up into three or four turns here, which is our voltage, our current regulation, rather, and then we've got this last half turn here, and you can see th this guy here comes down to A and A1, and that's what um, controls the amount of uh, voltage that's uh, going into the system based on the on the load so that we don't overcharge the generator. Well this is really fast and I, I hope it's uh, uh, it replaces another YouTube video that we had up for a couple of days we had to shorten but it was shortened in the wrong places. If you got questions about your regulator please give us a call otherwise we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.